Campbell, and I am the president-elect for the California Association of School Psychologists. Today, I'm doing a practice run-through, but I wanted to kind of get you ready and excited about the fall colloquial that we'll have here in Long Beach, but also in Fresno. Um, our fall colloquia in Long Beach will be October 21st, and our fall colloquia in Fresno will be October 22nd. Um, I just wanted to give you a brief review of some of the um, topics that I'll be covering, specifically around database decision making for mental health. Not exactly the hottest title, but sometimes there's things that we got to do day to day to make sure that students are receiving the best services that they can possibly. So, um, and if we can move advance a slide there, looking into the vision statement um, as far as the NASH model for practice and interventions in mental health services. School psychologists, in collaboration with others, demonstrate skills to use assessment and data collection methods and to implement and evaluate services that support socialization, learning, and yes, mental health. And so examples of professional practices associated with the development of social, emotional, and behavior and life skills will be moving forward. Um, in California in particular, we have an issue with um, our county mental health services. And so AB 3632 uh, from 1984 to 2011 um, and the later uh, updated revision AB 2726 required special education and county mental health to implement IEPs together. So if a student demonstrated a significant mental health need, the county and the school district would provide either inpatient services, outpatient services, day treatment services, and ongoing residential placement if necessary. So to, and this is coming from some of the latest regulations as of July of this year from AB 114. Um, the California legislature passed this to move really the funding forward towards school districts to ensure that mental health services continue for students. Um, so to ensure this service provision, many local education agencies or LEAs are considering an array of options to provide services that were previously provided by county mental health agencies. Some school districts may continue to contract with county mental health agencies. Some may contract with organizations or professionals in the community, which is a similar model to what was going on before, but here's the part <coughs> that I'm excited about school psychologists. Some may hire qualified personnel as district staff. So moving forward, um, and going back to looking more of a national scene, even back in 2002, the President's New Freedom Commission report um, said that schools are the best place for children to obtain mental health services. So some of the recommendations in looking at those mental health services were reduce stigma of the mental health services, um, look into suicide prevention, because so many uh, suicide, so much of suicide ideation doesn't go reported, in particular in either minority communities or communities that haven't traditionally accessed um, mental health services. Um, improve screening and expand school and expand school-based mental health programs. About this time as well, you had the uh, Surgeon General's report um, also indicating a lot of the major challenges with access to mental health. And they were particularly looking at black and Latino communities that um, during the crisis points, they were more likely to come, but they weren't as likely to come for preventative services. And part of that may have been the approach or the awareness that people had in the community or even the fact that it was called mental health. Um, everything from wellness to other pieces. So we'll come back to some suggestions for how to address some of those things. All right, so our main goals and objectives as we move on to the next slide um, will be to review the current situation in history, become aware of the types of data collection at the high school, um, for example, RTI and best practices, exemplary mental health programs, and review examples of how to use data for making decisions about the expansion of mental health services. 
Um, and also the last one is leave with ideas about how you can make database decisions that it can enhance your practice. So those last two objectives, <laughs> the examples, and um, leave with ideas of how you can make database decisions that can enhance your practice, you'll have to come to the fall colloquia for that. <laughs> but today we're gonna go over um, those first two objectives, so reviewing some of the current situation in history and become aware of the types of data collection um, at the high school level. So today's situation, mental health needs are definitely under identified as we were talking about earlier, and in particular in low income communities. And then also if you think about the 40 million folks that are uninsured in America or underinsured as well, who don't have access to mental health services. Okay. So sometimes like it or not, school psychologists are all a community has when it comes to direct access to mental health services. And sometimes they may not even be aware of it as such, especially for those of you that like to um, really connect with the school community. You're out in playgrounds, you're out um, meeting with other community members. People may not be perceiving it as such, but there's no copay. <laughs> We're there ready to serve the students. Um, it, along with school counselors, along with highly trained nursing professionals as well who work in the school, <coughs> school social workers also. A key component to RTI is having current ways to collect and evaluate data. And a lot of RTI has really been centered around the academic piece, which is important. And it really has shifted um, the way um, in which we collect data sets. And it's made it more dynamic and allowed people to um, consider more options rather than just one particular type of testing to look at a child's progress. Um, but what I'd like to do is move us into considering using even our own data that we can best interpret as school um, psychologists or other mental health professionals to really zero in on what we can do to provide better services for students. So the other key component is to have intervention and resources available. If that's all you do after listening to this or coming to our fall colloquia, if that's all you do is have more interventions and resources available, you've done something significant. You become a um, the school psychologist is viewed as the information source for mental health services. And I'll share a few stories about that between me and the school counselors. And, and I was thinking, you know, school counselors took more classes um, than me in counseling. However, some of the more challenging cases they'd send to us, because we had a breadth of knowledge about cognition, we had a breadth of knowledge about um, motivation, um, as well as the systems that need to occur to provide high quality mental health services. We're constantly evaluating programs, in particular for individual students or for even groups of students. So for example, an ED classroom or classroom for students who demonstrate emotionally disturbance. We're evaluating those programs ongoing, whether it's through our three year reevaluations or it's just our weekly interaction with them if we run a counseling group or do individual counseling or provide consultations to the teachers. So they really come to respect our knowledge base in that area. Okay. So how do we get